Lancaster, most powerful and efficient bomber in the world, and one of the most important war-winning weapons yet devised by the United Nations. Its fame is already established from that first heroic daylight flight to Augsburg, through the thousand bomber raids on Cologne and Bremen, to the present day, the Lancaster is a name that is writing war history. Lancasters are being built in several factories in Britain and Canada, built in terrific numbers. With every man and woman engaged in their construction, one thought is uppermost. The RAF is depending on them for Lancasters, more Lancasters, and yet more Lancasters. Give the RAF its Lancasters, and a great contribution will have been made towards Allied victory. Meet a few of the ordinary, hard-working people devoted to this important task. Angela Roberts, a capstan operator. Maisie Rafferty at a press. Little Billy, drilling. Dobson Hind and his mate, Joan Evans, riveting. Trimming and hammering, Alice Warburton and Rachel Strong. Jimmy Garnett, an all-in wrestler in his spare time at a heavy capstan. and a machine that doesn't require much human attention, an automatic lathe. It does everything but think. Let there be no doubt or argument about it, the skill and application of the workers in the aircraft factories is a great source of strength in our progress towards victory. Every pilot of a Lancaster is confident that he's handling an aircraft into which has gone not only superb designing, but the proud craftsmanship of an experienced army of workers. It's difficult to assess the value of that confidence in carrying out the vital tasks which are assigned to bomber crews. That confidence depends on the first-rate workmanship which is put into every nut and bolt, every part from the smallest component to the largest. Together, they build up into effective instruments for the hammering of Germany. The Lancaster comes of a famous family. Its immediate predecessor was the twin-engined Manchester. Then a means was found to incorporate four engines in the general Manchester design, and the result was the Lancaster. Four Merlin or Hercules engines give it a top speed of 300 miles an hour. The increased horsepower enables no less than eight tons of bombs to be carried. The design lends itself to rapid production an important point in so large and complicated a machine as a heavy bomber. And here's a sight become increasingly routine, a Lancaster leaving the sheds for its test flight. People are apt to think of the test flight as simply a pilot's job. But many other things besides the pilot's controls have to be tested in the air. There are the gauges and mechanism used by other members of the crew. Engineers and technicians accompany the pilot to note the performance and check the equipment. The test flight is just an everyday duty for the experts engaged on it, but it's an absorbing affair seen through the eye of the camera. Finally, our Lancaster has arrived at an operational station. It's the eve of another raid, a thousand bomber raid. The ground crews are completing the preparation of the Lancaster for its task. Faithfully, they check, test the guns, load up the cargo, 
The cargo which Goering promised should never fall on Germany. He and his deluded country are a bit wiser now. They realize at last what they started over Warsaw, Rotterdam, Belgrade, Coventry, London and Malta. The pilots are preparing too. In the briefing room, they learn their target and receive final instructions for the raid. Already, many German industrial cities have been devastated. But of places which have yet to feel the full weight of the RAF offensive, there still remains a long list. You now know precisely the next item on that list. Cross it off. Zero hour is approaching. Night is falling fast. The night of a thousand bombers for Germany. Yes, everything's okay, sir. Okay, everything's all And now, as our Lancaster takes to its element, think again of the importance of every item in its construction. The successful accomplishment of the job it has been assigned to may depend on one of the smallest parts, the lives of its crew, too. These, the first successful motion pictures ever taken during a night operation over Germany, were shot by the second pilot of a Lancaster. Imagine him prepared at any moment to leave camera for controls as he shoots the spectacular scenes which follow. The first bombers have dropped their incendiaries and ringed the target. Our cameraman is with the second wave. Flying at a great height, he sees nothing but flame and fire, fire and flames. Each speck of light a blazing German building. Easy enough to realize the catastrophe, the concentrated chaos that is overwhelming the city below. Almost unbroken lines of fire extend a mile in length. Yet the raid is still young. At least 500 more bombers have yet to come. Incidentally, there's quite a lot of flak about. Now we're turning home again with our report of another successful chapter in Britain's air offensive. Goering has assured the German people that the RAF has never sent a thousand bombers over Germany. Well, if it wasn't exactly a thousand, it might have been a thousand and one. Speed the day which sees a thousand Lancasters over Germany. It all builds up to the same supreme purpose, the paralyzing of the German war effort, the overthrow of German armed might, and the elimination of Nazism. Factory workers, no less than bomber crews, are dedicated to this task, and their Lancaster is truly a great champion in the fight. Let's say it again. The finest bomber in the world, built in British factories by British labor. That's the Avro Lancaster, the sky giant of the RAF. <laughs>